Sports Beat is brought to you by Ken Garth. We hear you. Welcome to Sports Beat and Day 45 without live sports. Thanks to the NFL Draft, it didn't feel like it. We have complete coverage of where local players went in the NFL Draft. And the newest member of the Indianapolis Colts, Julian Blackman, joins the show later on. Yeah, we also have some big college hoops news. A big announcement for one of the best college basketball players in this state. That's coming up at the top of the hour. The Green Bay Packers select Jordan Love, Jalen Johnson, Zach Moss, Terrell Burgess. Jalen Johnson, all the way, touchdown Utah. In trouble, sack back at the 10, Lucky Fortu. Daniels can't get out, and I wasn't letting him go. And he's the all-time leading rusher in Utah football history. Now he's in trouble. Lucky Fortu brings him down a loss of 12. The first round pick that caused the most buzz around the National Football League, that was the Green Bay Packers. They moved up four spots to number 26 and selected their future quarterback, Utah State star Jordan Love. Now, why do the Packers love Jordan Love? Well, he's a 6'4", 225-pound quarterback that can make all the throws. When you watch the tape, it's easy to see why some compare him to Super Bowl champion Patrick Mahomes. And Green Bay's a great place for him to land. Great organization, playoff team. He doesn't have to play immediately. There's no pressure because he wasn't a top-five pick, and he gets to learn from Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I'm a, I'm a playmaker. Um, I'm always ready to make plays, um, you know, whatever is whatever's needed. Um, you know, I got a, a, a really good arm, I, I'd say. Uh, a lot of confidence in that and just a lot of confidence in, um, you know, my ability to just make plays as a quarterback. And, uh, you know, I'm going to obviously come in, come in here and work and just continue to get better um, and improve my game. Utes cornerback Jalen Johnson was a first-round talent going into the draft. The first round came and went, though, and Johnson still had not been selected. On day two, there was no way Johnson would last long before being picked. The Chicago Bears select Jalen Johnson, defensive back, Utah. Yeah, the Bears had two second-round picks. They needed a cornerback. Enter Jalen Johnson, the seventh corner taken in the 2020 draft, but the first in the second round. Shortly after he was picked, he talked to the Chicago media, and he says he's going to the Windy City with a bit of a chip on his shoulder. With the 85th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Julian Blackman, defensive back, Utah. This hometown hero out of Layton High School is the 85th overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. The Colts were impressed with his transition from corner to safety as a senior. Many thought he would get drafted later due to his knee injury, but the Colts didn't want to wait for their guy. You know, I think that I can do a lot of things that are different uh, than a lot of other guys. You know, that makes me versatile. Uh, so being able to play nickel, corner, uh, safety, I talk to them and, you know, we're not sure what I'll do. If there's anything that the coach wants me to do, I'll be willing to do. Back before Julian Blackman was an all NFL, was an NFL player or an all American at Utah, he was a three sports star at Layton High School. He won a state title with his brother Jerese in basketball. And in football, he was an electric playmaker, as you could imagine, on both sides of the ball. But a broken arm cut his senior year short. Coming up, a conversation with Julian Blackman. We discuss his draft night experience, what seven youths getting drafted means for the program, and a letter he wrote in fourth grade. That's at the top of the hour. The Los Angeles Rams select Terrell Burgess, defensive back, Utah. Terrell Burgess started just one season with the Utes. What he did with that season was worthy of all Pac-12 honorable mention honors, and it has now led him to an opportunity in the National Football League. Just before it was announced that he was being taken by the Rams in the third round, he got the phone call he had been waiting his whole life for. Hello, this is Terrell Burgess. Terrell Burgess, this is Les Snead, GM of the Los Angeles Rams. How are you doing? How's it going, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I was wondering if you want to play some football for the L.A. Rams. I would love to, I would love to play some football for the L.A. Rams. All right. We're jacked to have you. you know? Yes, sir. That would be great. All right. Hey, our head coach is going to give you a call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. You're awesome, bro. It worked. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Buffalo Bills select Zach Moss, 
running back, Utah. Zach Moss is joining a playoff team in the AFC East. Taking one spot after Julian Blackman, 86th overall in the third round. Utah's all-time leading rusher will compete with Devin Singletary for the starting running back job with the Bills. Now that Tom Brady's moved on from the Patriots, the AFC East is wide open, and the Bills look poised to take the top spot, and Zach is excited to be a part of it. Well, just a guy that was going to come in and work every single day, man, um, you know, try to make this team better um, while, you know, also trying to go out there and, you know, just be the best player I can be. Um, you know, and that's the biggest thing, you know. Um, I just want to continue to be, uh, you know, a good person and, you know, trying to continue to be a good teammate. Lecky Fotu now goes to the Arizona Cardinals. And that Arizona Cardinals had the worst defense in the NFL last season. Their biggest area of weakness in the trenches on the D-line. They want to fix that problem for 2020. And Lecky Fotu is going to be a part of that solution. With the 114th overall pick, Fotu became the third player taken by the Cardinals in this draft. And of course, before the NFL draft and before wrecking ball carriers at the U, Fotu was making big-time plays with the Harriman Mustangs. Do you remember this? How about him scoring touchdowns as a tight end in the state championship game, helping Harriman claim the state title? A very interesting selection is Bradley and I out of Utah. The wait was worth it for Bradley and I, a second or third round talent dropping all the way to the bottom of the fifth round to the Dallas Cowboys. Anaya is a consensus All-American and Utah's all-time sack leader. Why did he drop? We don't know, but Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy are happy to have the Hawaii native in Big D. I hope the NFL is as good to you as it's been to me, and uh, welcome uh, for the Dallas Cowboys and all our fans. I'm glad you're here, buddy. Yes, sir. I can't wait to get to Dallas. Thank you, sir. Bradley, how you doing? Mike McCarthy. Hey, Mike, I'm doing good. How are you? It's a great yes, start sir. to a new beginning, young man. Okay? Yes, sir. I can't wait to wait, uh, work. Thank you very much. And don't think Bradley and I didn't take note of falling to the bottom of the fifth round of the draft. He sent this tweet after the draft, saying in part, the cream always rises. Blessed. Now watch me work. I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. Can't wait. Well, with the 197th overall pick, the Detroit Lions used a sixth-round selection to take defensive tackle John Penasini. Maybe overshadowed by some, uh, some, I should say, by sidekick Lecky Fotu. He was still second-team All-Pac-12, though, and with one of the top Lions' objectives in the draft to improve their run defense, they saw Penasini as a solution to that problem. He had 15 tackles for loss, five sacks, two forced fumbles in 22 starts at the U. All right, in this week's archive, we thought it would be appropriate to roll back the counter to 1982, Sam, when BYU star quarterback Jim McMahon was one of the top players available. Yeah, Paul James, he was there in Jim's living room as the draft unfolded. As Baltimore Colts selects in the Rams spot on the first round, quarterback Art Sleaster, Ohio State. <laughs> You happy about that? Very happy about that one. <laughs> he didn't want to go to Baltimore. No, I didn't want to go to Baltimore. Why? There's a number of reasons. Uh, you know, the, the whole organization is kind of, from the front office, has kind of been screwed up the last couple of years, and I didn't, I didn't want to be a part of that. Right now, you're hoping Chicago. Yeah, Chicago would be nice right now. Chicago Bears. First round selection, Riggs. Jim McMahon, quarterback, Rick Young. I'm very happy, Paul. Uh, you know, it's a good opportunity for me to go into a, a system now that uh, is going to be changed around as far as the offensive philosophy goes. And, and uh, you know, I got a good friend that's playing for the Bears, so it's, it should be a pretty exciting year. When you selected Argovitz, wasn't the plan to get out of the Baltimore situation if you could? Well, we uh, we put the ball in their court, you know, saying Baltimore, you know, if if you're not prepared to uh, to pay, then you know they shouldn't draft me, and so that's uh, they went ahead and took Art, and that's that's fine with me, you know. And I just uh, when we go in and play Baltimore, I hope to kick their butts. Like every week we go along, it feels like it's a a less and less chance. Yeah, will jazz basketball return? We'll hear more from Joe Ingles on that coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. Sports beat it's coming back.
Sports Beat is brought to you by Ken Gart. We hear you. Welcome back to Sports Beat. You know, the deadline to declare for the NBA draft was tonight. Utah State Center Nemius Keda. Well, he was thought to be a sure pick in this summer's draft, but that was before a knee injury last summer with the Portuguese national team. That got in the way of his sophomore season a bit at Utah State. He played just 22 games last season, but he looked as good as he's ever been in the Mountain West tournament. Well, Keda did make that decision today and announced that he will actually return to Logan for his junior season. In a statement that he released on social media, he said his dream has always been to play in the NBA, but now was not the right time for that. He finished by saying, quote, we can climb to the top of the Mountain West again. We'll be good to see him back on the floor again this year. Well, could jazz basketball be back in session within the week? Reports came out yesterday that the NBA is prepared to allow teams to reopen facilities in states where local restrictions have been eased. That would include Utah. Workouts would be allowed only on an individual basis and not together as a team. Joe Ingles talked with the media this week on a Zoom call. He said he's been working out at home during this separation from the game, and he finally got a hoop put up at his home so he can get some shots up. Even with all that work, Joe said he's not that optimistic they'll be getting back to play again this season. Honestly, uh, my personal opinion is every week that like it goes, like every week we go along, it feels like it's a, a less and less chance that we're, we're going to. It's going to be hard to come back and, and um, I guess like re-engage into what we were doing. Well, we had like 15 games left, so it's, it's a weird situation. So, Joe, being pessimistic that the NBA season will continue, I don't disagree with him. It's yeah. getting to that point. So instead of the playoffs, let's keep memories alive from playoffs past. Yeah, we've got some good ones. We've dug up five playoff games that took place on this day, April 26th. Let's jump in that time machine for these jazz moments. And we'll start on this date in 1984. Utah Jazz hosted the Denver Nuggets in a winner-take-all game five at the old Salt Palace. The Jazz jumped out to a 41-27 lead in the first quarter and never looked back. Adrian Dantley, 30 points and 12 rebounds, the fastest of them all. Ricky Green, 29 and 16 assists. Daryl Griffith had 24 points, including three three-pointers. The Jazz won a playoff series for the first time in franchise history with a 127-111 win. On April 26, 1992, the Jazz took a 2-0 series lead behind Carl Malone's second straight 32-point game. He also had 13 rebounds and three block shots. John Stockton was his Hall of Fame self. 21 points and 19 assists. Jeff Malone chipped in with 24 points. The series would later be postponed, though, for three days because of the 1992 riots that went on in L.A. Eventually, the Jazz won that series 3-2. April 26, 1997. The Jazz hosting the Clippers in Game 2 of their best of five first round series. Carl Malone put on one of the best playoff performances of his career. 12 of 25 from the field, 15 of 19 from the foul line. He scored 39 points, pulled down 11 rebounds. The Jazz took a 2-0 series lead with a 105-99 win at the Delta Center. On this day in 2003, the Jazz were hosting the Sacramento Kings in game three of the first round. Down two games to none, it was Greg Ostertag that led the Jazz with 22 points, 12 boards, five blocks. The mailman had 20 and 11. Stockton, 15 points, seven assists, and two steals. This was Stockton Malone's last win with the Utah Jazz. He's a hometown hero, a three-sport star at Layton High School, three-time All-Pac-12, an All-American, and now an Indianapolis Colt. Julian Blackman joins us now on Sports Beat. Indianapolis Colt safety Julian Blackman. How does that sound? Sounds right to me, man. It sounds right to me. <laughs> That's awesome. Can you share what it was like to receive that call from the Colts on Friday night? With the 85th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Julian Blackman, defensive back, Utah. Oh, man, it, it was surreal. There was a lot of missed emotions going on. Uh, my heart kind of dropped as soon as, I, as soon as I saw that it was Indianapolis that I was going to. Yeah, I was just thankful for the opportunity. And, and, you know, with my family, we just all been, you know, cheering and are celebrating. Uh, did you have any indication that the Colts had this much interest in you? Yes, sir. So they actually were the first team that talked to me when I got to the combine. Uh, you know, they just pulled me aside and they, one of the coaches was actually there to tell me, hey, don't be surprised when we pick you up earlier than what people expect. So, you know, I kept my mouth shut. I mean, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, a lot of people didn't, but yeah, I'm just happy that they did. Now, they think you're a great fit. Do you think you're, are they a great fit for you? What is it about that organization that uh, you're excited to be a part of? 
I think that I'm a great fit for that organization. Organization, um, you know, I think that I can do a lot of things that are different uh, than a lot of other guys. You know, that makes me versatile. Uh, so being able to play nickel, corner, uh, safety, um, I talk to them, and you know, we're not sure what I'll do. It's just anything that the coach wants me to do, I'll be willing to do. Now that the draft is over and you know where you're going, we want to see you on the field, and I'm sure you want to do the same as well. How's your rehab coming, and could you be 100% by camp if camp starts in late July? Uh, we'll see. Um, right now, we're just focusing on rehab. Um, not really. We don't have really have a timetable, so it just kind of depends on um, my rehab. So uh, hopefully, you know, the best comes the best. I can be early, but if not, I'll just keep rehabbing. Well, it was a great week for the University of Utah. Seven Utes drafted overall, three defensive backs in the first three rounds. I know you take a lot of pride in that. What does it say about the program, and what can it do for the program moving forward? I think it speaks volumes to the recruitment um, to our coaches is doing a great job playing guys that they trust and uh, understanding uh, the end goal for them, which is they want to win. They want to compete. And we brought that. Uh, the guys that they had, uh, Terrell, Jalen, uh, Zach Moss, all, all those guys that I got drafted today uh, or the past three days, it just shows, you know, the, the competitive spirit that Utah has. And for years, hopefully, uh, it helps with the recruitment. Have you had a chance to talk to any of your teammates that were drafted? Definitely. I, I pretty much reached out to all of them. Um, first one I talked to was Tua Burgess. Uh, we got on my FaceTime. And we were just talking around 1 a.m., just talking about how crazy it is and how fun it's been, um, just this whole ride. And hopefully I'll see him in the playoffs because I know I'll get there. you got to get his team there. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. I remember back in camp talking to both of you together, and it's kind of surreal that now we're at this point and you're both in the league. Terrell's a great story. I know you two are close. How did he go from playing very little to now a third-round NFL pick in the matter of one year? Uh, I think that's just honestly because the kid's smart. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who play behind guys who always are focused, and no matter what the situation, whether they're not a starter or not, they're always paying attention and very attentive listeners. And I think that's a big thing with 12 is he's a very smart player. He, he understands everything about the game. Uh, and, you know, he could play any position. And when the time came, he was ready. And he knew he was ready. And I, I called it, like, right before the season started, I, I told everyone, the real is going to go off. People are going to be very, uh, very, very happy with what they see from him. You were right on on that one. Now, you shared a social media moment uh, earlier today, a letter you wrote in the fourth grade. How much motivation did that letter provide over the years? And how cool is it to look back now? Awesome. I honestly, I didn't even remember the letter until my teacher sent it to my mom. And I was just reading it. And it's just funny how, you know, the things you speak into existence as a little kid, uh, some of us are blessed enough to uh, further it and actually complete it. And so, um, you know, it did feel fire for my whole life. You know, uh, even wrote in there that uh, if I'm not good at something, then I'm just going to work until I am good at it. And I still feel that way today. Um, I actually think there's a lot of things that I can work on my kids that I can get better at. So that's all I, I that as my motivation and my fire. Now, there are a lot of young kids out there, boys and girls, here in Utah that see what you have accomplished and they want to be like you. They want to achieve something great. What advice do you have for them tonight? Uh, honestly, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you, man. Um, if you if you want to be a doctor, if you want to flip burgers, go flip burgers. You better be the best burger flipper ever. Uh, <laughs> you know, anything that you want to do, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you, go do it because you can, especially at a younger age. You just have to be dedicated and have patience and faith in God. Um, that's, that's the main thing is just faith and understanding that his plan for you is the best plan. It's the only plan. And so uh, just understanding that and being able to understand that you as a person can do whatever you want as long as you set your mind to it, you'll be good. That's great advice, Julian. It has been a pleasure covering your career. From the time you were a Lancer to a Ute and now in the NFL, we can't wait to show your highlights on Sundays next fall. Best of luck in your next chapter. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. All right, well, just because you don't get drafted doesn't mean you can't make an NFL roster. Several Utes signed free agent deals after the draft. The list includes linebacker Francis Bernard, who signed a guaranteed deal with the Dallas Cowboys. Tyler Huntley will try to make the Baltimore Ravens roster, and Javelin Guidry signs with the New York Jets. Got a BYU Northridge high grad and BYU star defensive back Diane Gawulaku is among several BYU players signing free agent deals. He'll try to make the Los Angeles Rams roster. Running back Tyson Williams signs with the Ravens and Aleva Hifo signs with the Kansas City Chiefs.
Utah State had four players sign free agent deals, including defensive end Tipa Nalei. He signed with the Green Bay Packers. Weber State defensive end Jonah Williams signs with the LA Rams. Corner Canyon grad and Ohio State Buckeye Brandon Bowen signs with the Panthers. You can see a complete list of the signings at KSLSports.com. Jordan Love is one of just four players in Utah State history to be drafted in the first round. In the first sense, Phil Olson back in 1970. That's right, 50 years ago. What makes Jordan Love so special? Why did the Packers fall in love with him? Well, if you're still a doubter when it comes to Jordan Love, maybe these five plays will help convince you. Let's count them down. The top five plays of Jordan Love's career at Utah State. of four. Love delivers through it. Wow. And it's caught by Nathan. What a throw. What a catch. Touchdown Utah State. Yeah, number five. Jordan to Jordan. Love steps up in the pocket and hits Nathan right on the shoulder in stride for the touchdown against Wake Forest. Puts it in the only spot it could be in. Seven points for the Aggies. The shoulder shimmy. Long ball down the sideline. It is caught. There goes C.O.C. Mariner. This is also from 2019. Love holds the defenders with his eyes, then threads the needle to Seosi Mariner for the 80-yard touchdowns from the opposite hash. Incredible throw. Jordan Love off his back foot to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Aggies. I love this play. Love running to his left, still gets the hips turned and throws against his momentum. Right on the money to Seosi Mariner, too, for the touchdown against Stony Brook. That's an NFL arm right there, and that's number three on our list. Fake it, love, toss it deep, down the seam, and it is holding. Do you have any idea how difficult that throw is to thread the needle like that? It doesn't get you much prettier. Love dropping it over the shoulder of Jordan Nathan against Fresno State. Oh, my goodness. Love trying to buy a little time, lost it up in the air, passes, caught a one-handed grab. Love. The number one play in Jordan Love's career at Utah State came this last season against LSU, throws on the run with perfect touch, right in stride for the big game. Jordan Love making plays like these in an NFL stadium in the not-too-distant future. All right, Thurl Big T Bailey chats with Mark Eaton about some of the glory days of 1980s jazz basketball and Big Mark's career. It's a conversation you don't want to miss when we come back. Well, this week's play of the day coming to you straight from the home office of Bill Belichick there on the left. Right when the Patriots draft pick is announced, the networks check in on the Belichick office only to find out his best friend is making the pick. The oh, he's a good boy. Participating in the that draft. explains why they took a kicker <laughs> in the draft, right? Thurl Bailey and Mark Eaton were teammates with the Jazz for eight years and were a part of turning the Utah Jazz into the winner that we celebrate today. Join them now for a conversation on the latest episode of the Thurl Talk podcast on kslsports.com. Here's a sample. I'm excited to have Mark on because Mark was the epitome of teamwork back when we played with the Jazz. <laughs> Things were starting to happen for the Utah Jazz, and Mark Eaton was a big part of that. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Mark Eaton on board. Mark Eaton, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Big T. How are you today? I'm doing really good, man. I know you're staying safe and, and uh, keeping your loved ones safe during this, this time. What have you been spending your time doing? So yesterday, I cleaned out the pasture with the tractor <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, just trying to... Uh, keep our mental well-being together i think that's the biggest challenge <laughs> so mark before we get into these four commitments i want to kind of break that down for people to understand one what you were committed to back then and then how someone else recognizing some particular potential in you early in particular uh coach tom lubin am i correct yeah and, and coach tom was that co coach in junior college who um who came around the corner one day and saw me working at this tire store and was like what the heck is a seven foot four guy doing working at this tire store and uh and started in in his persistence and uh, you know I, I everybody that came into the tire store talked to me about basketball right i mean you've experienced the same thing and um, after a while, it gets really annoying. I'm like, no, I'm not a basketball player. I'm here working on the cars. You need your car fixed? Let me know. And I'd, I'd get kind of, you know, irritated with yeah. people because cause they just drive me crazy. I'm like, look, do you want me to look at your brakes or not? Like, you know, like, uh, you want me to fix your carburetor or not? 
but I think the persistence part really came later when I was at UCLA and I wasn't playing very much and sitting on the end of the bench and um, and my junior college coach telling me, hey, look, if you're not going to play in the games, you're going to have to make the practice or your games. You're still going to be the first guy to practice and the last one to leave. And um, taught me that through persistence and just continuing to work on my game and master certain parts of it, that I would have a chance to try out at the next level. And it, and I couldn't see it at that point in time. I was really frustrated. And, and um, you know, you all, we all want to be a star when we go to college and play basketball. And, and I was anything but. Um, but I did continue to work. I listened to them. And then when I finally got the opportunity to try out for the Jazz, um, you know, I had done enough work where Frank Layden, the coach, was like, you know, you're kind of rough, but uh, you're seven four. Hey, I'll take a chance on you. I'll, I'll give you a contract for one year, and we'll see what happens. And um, and it was through that, you know, his commitment to me. I said, all right, I'm going to double down and work even harder because I want to stay in the NBA. I don't just want to be a one and done kind of guy. I want to, I want to get here and, and figure it out. And, and together, we were able to, you know, they made some changes to the team. They brought in some new players like Big T, Thurl Bailey, and. Um, and together we made something out of it, but um, it was really through persistence all the way around, and it became kind of a, a building block, I think, of the culture of the jazz going forward. The Hallowed Grounds, brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen. Welcome into this week's episode of The Hallowed Grounds, Ogden Golf and Country Club. We thank them as always. Matty Gay, Utah fans, remember him. Uh, current Tampa Bay Buck. We'll have some fun. Uh, Maddie. this is how this thing works. We're on the first hole. It's a par five. You beat me. We go to the second hole. If you hit it closest to the pin on the par three, $500. Bushnell range finder is all yours. Now, here's the deal. We, we, won't, we won't let you leave empty-handed. All right. If I happen to beat you on this par five, I'll give you a $100 gift card to you into golf so that you can... Uh, you can buy whatever you want with it, man. Maybe upgrade the driver. Maybe upgrade the driver. All right. <laughs> uh, guests first. Your tee box. We'll play off the blues. All right. Shot. Are we plugged in? Are we serious? You're plugged, man. When you were uh, playing soccer at UVU, is it true that BYU told you they probably weren't going to have you on their team? Uh, it was. I had a little tryout with them. and uh, So you went down and kicked for them? I went down and kicked at a little tryout for them. They had Skyler Southam, who was high school All-American, coming back right. from his mission. So they just said they, they didn't were like, have a spot. We, "We've got four kickers. Uh, we've got an All-American coming back. I think we're good." And I can't blame them. Right? I had no film on me for since high school. I mean, I never really kicked. Uh huh. Uh, so I mean, I can't I can't blame them for the decision. There you go. Nice work. So what's your draft story? How did it all happen? That morning, nephews had a soccer game, so I went to that, came back, was just watching it on TV. Not and then you got picked up pretty early on the third day, right? Yeah. It was early fifth. I was saying, if I go undrafted, here's some teams that I think are good spots for me to go, that I can win a job, and that fit our family good. And I actually mentioned Tampa, and the wife and her family, when they first moved from England here, they moved to the States, they moved to Tampa. Oh, wow. And they lived there for two years. And so she was like, I'm looking up places to live in Tampa. Meanwhile, my phone starts ringing. It and it's on- Tampa, Florida on and it, And right? I'm looking at it and it's an 813, it says Tampa. And I look at the screen and Tampa's two picks away. And I say, hello. And so everyone's kind of freaking out, like, wait, what's going on, what's going on? And I start speaking very like, respectful like I wouldn't talk to a buddy uh -huh. like yes sir thank you very much of course and they all start kind of freaking out like where 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 like where's he going who is it and my dad's like Tampa it's Tampa like they're two picks away and then uh talk to different people on the phone and I hang up and you know we're going to Tampa get up nice pot oh sweet bit of Zeus I can't let you get out of here um, without like some Tom Brady conversation. Oh, Come yeah, on. of course. So, so first of all, who's more excited, yourself or your missus? Uh, myself, I think. She doesn't care for it? Not really. She's not very... For Giselle, you know? I mean, she she wants to have a dinner party with me. I was gonna say, Giselle. She wants to get on. to know him. The family's told me, like, hey, let's, let's get to know him. Matty, your Super Bowl odds just 
skyrocketed. I mean, they skyrocketed when Tom came, and then Gronk showed up. And... Yeah. I shouldn't say skyrocket. The skyrocket's the one. They plummeted. You know, you guys are pretty... I don't know what you are. Yeah. I, I... But On paper, you're... it looks good. Uh, all right, Matty, unfortunately, we tied the first, so um, I can't give you the bush now, but I can give you a $100 gift card to you into golf. I'll take it. Spend it wisely. Best of luck this season. And like I said, I'm not joking. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come you down and watch yeah. you. Yeah, I'm going to actually get KSL Sports to pay for it, and um, and I'll just consider myself working. I wouldn't think of any other way to do it. Yeah, so just Make them um, get yeah. a dinner sorted with uh, Brady, Gronk, and uh, yourself. Anybody else? Uh, whoever you'd like, I guess. All right, and, yeah. um, Try to get Bruce there as well. And I'm not allergic to anything, by the way, so I'll, I'll eat anything. Sounds good. we got some great seafood down there. Perfect. Seafood fan? A big seafood fan. All right, maybe a little surf and turf. Matty Gay, everybody. <laughs> Welcome into this week's Pro Tip of the Week at the Ogden Golf and Country Club. Very fortunate to have Scott Erling with us, the Director of Golf up there at Weber State, go Wildcats, uh, and as well as the, the head coach of the, of the men's team. So, Scott, we're going to work on some chipping techniques and uh, drills, I guess, that, that people can go out and use. Yeah, Tom, you know, one thing I see with my players and, and most golfers in general is that a lot of times when they're chipping around the greens, they, they have a hard time deciding what kind of shot they're going to hit. Is it going to be high? Is it going to be low? Do they want it to run a lot? You know, so on and so forth. So one thing I like to work on with people is like, okay, if I gave you the ball, had you put it in your hand and said, okay, I want you to toss this as close to the hole as you can, almost inevitably they pick the right shot just because intuitively their brain tells them how this is going to work. So, you know, when we're looking at a target like this one right here, you know, I just want to try to toss this as close to the hole as I can. I kind of pick the right trajectory, my landing spot on the green, and the ball gets close to the hole. This kind of helps you make a decision and takes a lot of the uncertainty out of the shot. Hi, I'm Maddie. I work at Uinta Golf, and I'm one of the shoe experts here. We're going to kind of go over basically what we have here in our stores. We have great options for everybody, every type of golfer, every level of experience. We have high-end shoes that are great for waterproofing. This is probably the biggest decision golfers make when they come in to buy golf shoes, whether they want to go with more of a spikeless casual shoe or more of a traditional replaceable spike shoe. We definitely have a wide range of options for our customers, and it makes it really helpful because then...